Hello and welcome, welcome, welcome to the show you have been waiting for. For those of you that have been following along online, host of Street Fight, Brian Quinby, Mr. At Murder Brian, M U R D E R B R Y A N, and former guest to the show, Internet Darling, Kush Bomb, not named after any drug doing. It's C U S H B O M B, Matt. Uh, made a journey to the Defending the American Dream Summit thrown by Americans for Prosperity, the Koch brothers themselves. And it happened all in Columbus, Ohio, the host or the hometown of Street Fight. Um, and so I've been waiting to get into this and I've been very excited about it. And I know everybody that's been following along is as well. But I want to say thank you. I think Matt has the names here to the people that made this happen. So you want to get yeah, in with that? Uh, yeah, because it was actually pretty expensive to go there. You know, uh, it'd be, you'd think that the Koch brothers would be willing to just sort of, sort of, you know, subsidize people. But what we learned, one of the things we learned there is that they're pretty, pretty cheap dudes. Uh, so it actually was pretty expensive, and and so uh, I did a GoFundMe for us to go, and we got donations from a number of people. The biggest one was from an anonymous donor who I'm assuming is listening, and whoever you are, thank you very much for your large donation that really was the bulk of the cost. But then also we got donations from uh, my boy John Collins, uh, a friend of the show, Will Menneker, uh Nick Thompson, and uh, my friend, uh, Robert Bauman. So thank you to all those people for donating. Will Menneker yeah, was... actually Will Menneker is actually embroiled in a feud with Brett right now. So let's... Oh, no, that's awkward. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, I'll take any man's money, uh, even if I'm in a feud with him. But uh, I, I am happy to hear that he was able to chip in. Um, yeah. He certainly has plenty to go around living in his New York empire. Uh, <laughs> for, I mean, no, that's awesome. Let's say, let me, I do want to say that. That's super awesome. When I saw it, I saw, you set up a GoFundMe, and I went to it, and I was like, holy fucking shit, that is crazy that, that so much money came in so quickly and that people wanted to hear it. And then I didn't even know what it was about. And then Brian gave me the lowdown that this is, what is it essentially? It's, it's a grass quote unquote grassroots <laughs> organization uh, of, 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 of activists, of right wing uh, activists from across the country. Uh, and you know, they, they are regular people, I guess, but there are a, a good sprinkling of professionals amongst them. But you know, the idea that it's grassroots is pretty much of a joke because the whole thing is funded by the Koch brothers, one of whom was there, um, and who got two standing ovations, like he was uh, Kim Jong Il. Um, so yeah, they came together, and it was like a combination of uh, of 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 these breakout sessions where they got people got together to talk about different ways to bring back uh, community, you know, right wing ideas, or what they called. Uh, freedom, ideas of liberty and freedom uh, to uh, their hometowns. Then there were a bunch of speeches for two days, uh, including a lot of presidential candidates. I mean, it was, it was a pretty loaded group. And then um, also uh, there's kind of a weird infomercial feel to the whole thing because they were selling these, uh, these, or these sort of branched organizations that help create sort of the 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 infrastructure for sort of right-wing activism in, in America. Uh, like there was one group uh, that called the Bridge to Freedom that literally reaches out to people who are poor and gives them access to like, I guess, like right-wing... I uh, <laughs> Books about liberty. capitalism? Yeah, yeah, like liberty, <laughs> like, hey, you know, hey, poor person, hey, person who, you know, works three jobs and, and you know, uh, can't afford... Uh, to fix their car and 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 has no free time. Here's the road to serfdom by F. A. Hayek. I hope you enjoy it. Uh, <laughs> Here, it, maybe it's all those poor thoughts in your head is, mm -hmm. is the problem. <laughs> that, so here are some that, new ones. That really is the idea. The, the the main premise of sort of everything that was said is that basically uh, prosperity, which obviously the Americans for prosperity are in favor of, is a state of mind. And if you achieve it with the right ideology, you will become it. It's sort of like the secret, but with Austrian <laughs> economics. It's like Thetans a little bit. A little bit of Thetans oh, it, it, it totally felt like a Scientology rally, but instead of L. Ron Hubbard, it was Ayn Rand. 
I've, I've, you know, and like, I felt like, okay, I felt like a good portion of people that were there were being paid to be there. There was a sense of like, because one, there's a thing called certified activists. Did and and they that's had the a, other that's the other thing that they they pitched. It's this, uh, yeah, they have a they have a multi tiered. Uh, basically training program that you can sign up to learn how to be an activist in your community and it, and it and it emphasizes volunteerism but it also makes the point that this is like you can become a paid member of sort of the coke you know octopus and there were definitely a bunch of those people there especially yeah, anybody who was you like could... anybody who was like younger than 50 was probably there as a professional capacity yeah, because it said because you would it said it cost two hundred and twenty five dollars to get to take the class to get the certification. I assume to get the certification. I don't think anybody ever fails the class. And then it felt to me like that. Then after that, they got a few ten dollar an hour jobs. They got a few fifteen dollar an hour jobs. Like if you can get yourself in within the organization, because um. Right when we walked into the auditorium, Matt and I sat at the... First of all, we're horrible people when I think <laughs> about it now. We sat at the end of the row and then made people... Like, we would get up and be like, you can sit in this row, but not on the end. Like, you're going to have to pass us. Hey, man, in. we got there ahead of them. Yeah. yeah. There was a competition. There was a free market competition for seats. <laughs> and we yeah, got, you don't have to explain got them. going alpha at this place. Yeah. Sometimes you can go alpha in this situation. Yeah, so we kept doing that. And so the first speech was done by the chairman of the board of Americans for Prosperity. And After he came out with an Olympic torch... And lit it on the stage. Yeah, first of all, that, it this was torch. the torch of liberty. Yeah, so yeah, I, 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 I will, I'll bring that. I'll talk about that in a second. But like, this woman was like mouthing the words to this guy's speech, and she would like uh, nudge her husband and be like, "Oh, he changes that number every time." Like when he was telling a joke. Like this woman had seen this show a lot of times. <laughs> So this is like Neil Diamond, basically, yeah, up to her. She, she was like at a regular, like she was at a place that she regularly goes to, and I can't imagine Free like. Bird! <laughs> yeah, do a and job. now, well, let's get a little bit. Let's do get a little bit of the Al Gore invented the internet again. Which yeah, they did. Yeah. He did an Al Gore invented the internet joke. A, a lot of them, actually. Oh, Al Gore, Lord save the internet. Yeah, that kind of that people love that. They love that. That's incredible. So, and this is happening in front of a giant monitor. Like you, I, I heard Sean Kingston call nine one one. Shorty's burning up the dance floor playing, and there was like lights going off. And then a guy was lighting a Liberty torch. But you want to hear something about that, Brett? Like, not all the seats in that room were filled. Okay. I believe that. I'm a pro wrestling <laughs> fan. I know how I know how live events work. <laughs> and, yeah. Well, yeah. Believe me. When we first walked in. I was like, this looks like more of a TV show than Monday Night Raw did, you know, because there was at least an arena. There was a ring there. Something seemed to be happening. That place looked like a TV show. But, like, not all those seats were filled, and there, it wasn't like there were a ton of people walking around in the convention hall. There was nobody there either. It was a sparsely attended convention. They were really excited about the numbers. but it Yeah, they said it was the most – they said it was the biggest one they had. It's like the ninth, the ninth annual, and they said it How was big? the biggest one. They How were big? claiming thir they were claiming thirty six hundred, but like in that room, I don't know. I felt more like maybe fifteen hundred, two thousand, maybe. I felt yes, it did not feel like almost four thousand people. Thirty six hundred people is what they said. And the thing is that when they had the big uh, sessions at the at, in the afternoon, there was nothing else going on, and we would leave to do stuff, uh, and there was like you said. Like Brian said, there's nobody in the in the rest of the auditorium or the rest of the uh, convention center uh, during the speeches. So it's not like people were elsewhere, you know. Yeah. <laughs> right. This is this is it. I mean, we, yeah, we, it's like it's pretty much there. There's not going to be an afternoon rush. 
everybody is in a way to lunch. Well, I uh, thought so that, it's not, this isn't I, like this isn't like an impending movement that's gonna. You don't think this is taking over the nation? I don't think that's happening. And and here's another thing: uh, the only other time Matt and I have hung out was he came to town and we walked through this the convention center for an anime convention, and it was wall to wall people. There were people everywhere, and there were people in the auditorium rooms watching stuff. There were way more. There's more anime fans. And Columbus said there's more anime fans than there are people at the Americans for Prosperity Summit. That is great news. That actually relieves me quite a bit. Um, so it was really – so for the most part, though, you guys were showing up for a show because I, I, I was trying to figure out what it was going to be as well, but it was, it was just going to be – it was a series of speeches. Yeah, it was like a TV that was the, show. That's the main event in the afternoons, yeah. There, there's breakout sessions in the morning, which we didn't attend, but we saw – because we got we got the brochure, we saw what they were, and I, I tweeted that one of them was like how to talk to millennials about freedom. Yeah, I mean that's not hard to do. They love they seen they seen freedom in like a Levi's commercial or something, yeah. right? Yeah, it's like hey hey kids, swipe right on uh, liberty. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then there, there's like one on how to get your fail son out of your house. Like, literally, how to get him out of your basement. And it's the same idea of, like, if this person believes in prosperity and, and you know, competition and capitalism, they will, like, spontaneously figure out how to get a job and get out of your basement. Start thinking yeah. about hard work, son. Start thinking about it, and then you'll be about it, and then you can get yeah. up out of my house. Yeah. Well, I mean, yes. there's not... There's not <laughs> I, one of the problems about this job thing is is that, like... They would love your son to be able to leave his ba leave your basement if there were jobs, but these environmentalists, that is the main problem. See, the, I, I think one of the reasons this was a more sparsely attended convention is also that these are the business Republicans. Yeah, they really didn't do a lot of the, like, red meat sh stuff that, like, that... There was some, like, Bobby Jindal talked a bit about immigration, but for the most part it was all about, you know, the glories of the free market. And the fact is, is that, like, the, the Trump's, the, the rise of Trump really shows that, that that's always been a weird connection in America. Like, it's, it's very much a product of the last 30 years where Republicans are able to spot weld sort of right-wing social resentment to free market economics. Those don't really go together naturally, because if you look at the right-wing around the rest of the world, right-wing politics tend to be very economically populist, but also sort of racist. And, yeah, and fascist, yeah. And, yeah, like they, yeah, like you look at the European parties, like the, like the, the, the true Finns and all that, uh, and, and like Trump is really representing that, and that's why he's like catching on fire. Uh, that idea of like, yeah, white people are the best, and you know, we're being oppressed by all of these foreigners, but, and also, we should all be in, you know, a blood-soaked competition for each other in a zero-sum, you know, game of uh, economic success <laughs> or failure. Those don't really go together. The idea is that, like, we should be a Volk. And that's really more intuitive, and that's what Trump is relating to. So these really are people who, like, these are, I, I bet a bunch of them, the ones who aren't professional uh, political operatives, are small business owners. Yes. Because, like, that's the backbone of that sort of ideological right-wing economic stuff is, is, is small business owners and, of course, people who, you know, work in, in, at high levels in corporations and stuff. Yeah, no, well, any, well, any oil and gas representation there? No, any coal rollers out front? Oh, no, but, I mean, there were a bunch of shots made at stupid environmentalists and their dumb global warming and all that garbage. They there really... was also, there was a kid, there was a one of those young dudes that looked like they would eat you if oh, like, God. They're, if the shit they're went terrifying. down. They're terrifying. <laughs> it's like they're, they're, anybody who was like under eight, under like twenty five was. There were two groups. There were like these kind of adorably dorky looking teens who clearly were kind of idealistic. And my gut tells me that in a few years they're probably going to look back on this and be embarrassed. And then there were like these Patrick Bateman wannabe psychopaths who clearly have decided that politics are going to be their lives and their vocation, and they're working up the ladder. And yes, if you got trapped in an elevator with them for more than five minutes, they would fucking eat your liver. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's just the world we're in. It's reality to them. They I would... have to do this to you. Sorry, but you're just weaker in this situation. Yep, yep. I'm, I'm going to conquer you. Yep. And those were the guys. Those were 
like, unfortunately, we got there at the tail end of the uh, protests, but those were the guys that were going out and arguing with the protesters, too. With, yeah. Like I said, m- most of uh, it's not the sexy Republican Party that you that people Which, see <laughs> think it is. Well, what about Grammy and Pop Pop? Were they there? Like that, that was the... most of them. It was mostly older folks. And like yeah. I said, the like volunteers, retired people, small business owners if I had to guess, yeah. Mostly the nicest, older folks. The the old people look nice. Like you couldn't I, like I was I, first of oh, all, I know I, I know them all. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they look I'm so related nice. to them all. But I'll, I'll I'll throw you a little story here. When Bobby Jindal did throw some red meat out there, um, well, Jeb Bush had spoken earlier. And yeah, Bob- he didn't do too great. Oh God, no! It was he like did okay. But the it- thing about Jeb is like he's he he went up there and he, by the way he's looking like fit as hell. I was surprised. He was like cut. He was like ta- he was like tapered. But he was piped he- up. Oh, well, he just he looked slim. It was surprising, but but he That's also nice. had this. He had a sports coat on with no tie because he wanted to look, you know, casual, and like he had the top button button, so he kind of looked like the coat didn't fit. It was awkward, but like he had the energy of like a middle manager who's pumping up the sales force at the company picnic, you know, the one, like, the one have, that won't like yeah won't let go, but has yeah, to do it's it. like hey everybody, we're gonna have the best quarter ever, you know, that kind of thing, <laughs> and and people were kind of it was very it was very lukewarm, yeah. Yeah, that, I know. I can see him not inspiring much passion. Um, Man, it that, was disappointing. Uh, it was this. He's a bush. Like, like I would think that. Yeah, have some gumption. It, yeah. Well, I mean, the audience for like, imagine being like, I'm lukewarm about Bush. You know what I mean? I thought everybody hated would hate him, and like, two percent of people would like him just because everybody else hates him. <laughs> Well, I figured he could walk into a room like that and be warmly welcomed. No. I mean, he could, I mean, you're you're playing to your audience. I mean, for real. I mean, he could just go out there and say, you know, that he, he um, Dick Cheney. I had Thanksgiving dinner with Dick Cheney. I mean, I think they hate Jeb Bush. I, really I don't think really. anybody. Yeah, any, nobody really likes him. Like a lot of these <laughs> yeah. people, a lot of these people, especially at the upper echelons, will accept him as a as a as a as an electable, you know, cipher or whatever. But they don't really have any passion for him. I mean, even a chump like Bobby, Jindal, like this is what Brian was saying. Like Bobby Jindal had much more uh, red meat in his speech. And even though he's this like ridiculous pipsqueak nerd who looks like he's giving his speech while being wedgied and hanging from the top of a of you know the flagpole he got people like he yeah. got real cops because he was really willing to like hit him with the red meat and say insane stuff the way that Jeb wouldn't yeah like, yeah, that's what I was getting. That's what I mean. He's like he 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 had the chance to go out there and just say some shit. There's not like heavy reporting happening. He could have just went out there and said like I I do hate all the Mexicans down in Florida where I live. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, like I literally can't remember anything about what Jeb said. I remember Bobby Jindal's speech pretty well, but I don't remember anything because it was all literally like boilerplate stuff yeah. about how the need for the need for less regulation and more opportunity for prosperous America. Just <laughs> we like, need prosperity, I think, is what we like, need. One of, one of the things we got in our swag bags was this little kit of uh, of magnets you can like you can put on your uh, refrigerator, and it's a bunch of words that you can rearrange, and there are words like you know freedom, liberty, opportunity, prosperity, winning, <laughs> and like his speech was basically just those rearranged. <laughs> and then you get the take home kit. These are my favorite words. Anytime <laughs> somebody says them, they just ring so true to me. I just hear the word and I go crazy. But like I Ryan was, was saying, gr- uh, yeah, like Bobby Shindal had had red meat, and I think you were going to talk about that lady who like responded very strongly to Bobby's uh, yeah. comment. Yeah, this is what's strange. Okay, so Bobby Jindal's getting into his stuff, and he says the craziest thing. First, the, the first thing he says that's red meat. Let me get you. Let me get you like yeah, warm me up here. Yeah, here. give me the whole thing, man. I want. I want to know what this pip squeeze guy say. So he said that if he started talking about sanctuary towns, which is this thing they've made up where illegal immigrants. Yeah, can yeah, go. these hidden, uh, this underground railroad of job thieves. Yeah. Yeah. And murderers. Don't forget murderers. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, rapists and murderers, too. And he was like, oh, he was like, I know exactly how to get rid of these people. We just, we we make the lawyer. 
Uh, well, no, we make the mayor and all of the people that work for the city accountable for the crimes of illegal immigrants. Which is insane and absolutely <laughs> How is he going to make him accountable? And- that- he was, he's literally going to charge them as accessories to the crimes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a wild ass America. They should do that as like a science fiction show. Like, yeah. you sure you can handle it? You think you can prevent one illegal from committing a crime? <laughs> you know, like everybody gets their reign to see how long they can make it last. Right. Because you're like, done. The first, I mean, yeah. yeah. The first that's time an illegal immigrant like breaks into a car or you know shoots somebody, the mayor gets arrested for accessory to that. I mean, <laughs> that's just that's insane. I mean, we have some pretty we have some pretty liberal like felony murder and uh, accessory statutes in America, but like there's no especially since these I mean accessory to murder or something is not a federal crime anyway, so the president wouldn't be able to order that in the first place. Yeah, he also it's, promised. It's he just got, gibberish. It's just gibberish <laughs> to get people excited. Brett, I want to tell you a story he told at the beginning of his speech that will make you so. This is going to turn you red hot. Okay. So he told the story of him being born. His parents, legal immigrants, by the way. They came here legally. Of course. Of course. He told Squeaky the, clean record. Yeah, he told the story of when he was born, his father didn't have money to pay the doctor. And the doctor was like, uh, oh, you know, you can just write it off as, you know, you can write it off as whatever. And uh, I was just doing my duty or some some doctorly thing that the doctor said. And Bobby Jindal's dad was like, no, I won't do that. I'm going to come here every month, and I'm going to give you money. And he, like, basically was, like, saying, like, that doctor gave my dad credit. Let him pay back his debt. <laughs> that's the most – yeah, that's something to be thankful for, credit. Well, that was that was a really proud – that was, like, a proud moment for him. But so he Dude, goes – yeah, that's that's crazy. So, yeah, his father his – fa- my father was living for me, just like everybody else in this audience should. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But one of the odd, one of the best parts of his speech is when he said, "You know, Jeb Bush." I give him a Southern accent too because all he Republicans like, yeah, have well, one, he, and he has one too that I'm fairly certain is fake. But yes, yeah, he he's it's, like Jeb Bush wants to make friends with the left, and this is what I heard. And I'm sorry if this is loud. No, <laughs> from some woman that was behind me. She was just all of the. Energy in her body was sucked out. I mean, like all the bile and hate she has for the, the very left. thought, the very thought of make of being friends with the left and being liked by the left just drove her insane. Yeah, made yeah, her. That's I mean, horrific. she seems so angry. It's we always Brett and I will build these straw men on street fight about about like those kind of tea party type conservatives, and we're like they're just boiling all the time. They're like always boiling, but they never like let loose. Well. Matt and I went to the place where they fucking let loose, man, and like, as where someone as tells I, them their worst fears. <laughs> yeah, as soon as that guy started talking about illegal immigration and Jeb Bush trying to be, Jeb Bush is a leftist, basically, is what he was saying. Yeah, they they uh, but like that felt like a real wrestling move. Like, my opponent uh, says that puppies suck. And everyone's like, no, puppies are awesome. I hate that guy. (laughs) Yeah, that is smooth as hell, though, to be like, yeah, I'll go on third. I'll go after Bush. I'll go after Jeb Bush. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> Let's see what Jeb Bush should do. Like, I would probably, if I was Bobby Jindal and I was given a speech at this summit where I knew it was just a bunch of idiots that would like to hear whatever I said, like, doesn't care. They'll stand up and cheer. They were told to applaud, and they applauded. Like, they'll do anything they get asked to do. Yeah, he, that is a smart move. Yeah, Jeb should definitely came out stronger. He didn't think that uh, Bobby was going to take the take the lead there, man. But that, it sounds like you were... Pretty much embroiled in a cutthroat game the whole time. Well, a guy came, oh, yeah. a guy came up to me after Jindal's speech, and he like, out, he gave me a nudge, and he just was like, that's a heck of a lot better than that first guy's reception. <laughs> <laughs> that's <I> awesome. <laughs> my, favorite, my favorite moment from the Jindal speech is, without question, he's complaining about Obama and like listing all of his failures, and he says... This president wants to declare war on trans fats and a truce with Iran. But, like, <laughs> like, let's take the average American. Their likelihood of being killed by Iran is literally zero. 
they will never they'll never encounter an Iranian, and if they do, it will be in a like maybe you know like waiting in line for a Starbucks or something. They will never ever be killed by an Iranian. It's like it's more likely that they get killed by like rogue like Swedes or something. Like they will never ever have to worry about being killed by an Iranian. Whereas trans fats, considering that heart disease is the number one killer in America, is literally like a fifty percent chance that it will kill them. Yeah, and yet it, it, for these people, it's obvious that trans fats are harmless and adorable, and you should bathe in them. And that this country that's three thousand miles away and has a military that's like microscopic compared to America's, <laughs> and could never even conceive of or be able to carry out any kind of significant attack in America, is obviously a first order threat. While they're shoveling fucking trans fat fries down their throat. And their heart is like on the verge of giving out. And I just love the idea of like one of these people seeing, you know, like Malia Obama wearing a saucy t shirt and getting so mad that they literally die there of the heart attack that they thought was stupid to worry about. You should see their <laughs> you should see their that would, that's perfect. that's a beautiful story. I'm cutting that one out. <laughs> yeah. They should fucking box lunch. They they should have uh, brought one of those box lunch. I saw people like stealing the box lunch. Oh, like, like, I think box I can get another look, one. Like, those box lunches look terrible. I think we would have gotten one for free, but I didn't want to eat it. No, we went and ate it at those, Hot Chicken Takeover. That was They're, delicious. That was yeah. delicious. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's what burned me. It's like the Cokes are so freaking cheap. Like those horrible box lunches. And then we went to the party after the whole thing, and it was a cash bar. We're like, you guys have a hundred billion dollars. Yeah, they don't take. How do you, you want to use your? You can't AMS give a couple cards. of drink. You can't give a couple of drink tickets to these people. These people are paying upwards of a hundred dollars to be there. You can't give them a drink ticket. That's absurd. Hundred fucking dollars. There were VIP passes though that, at that Buckeye Bash where you could go up another flight of steps oh, and be around the worst people in the whole yeah. world. Yeah. Oh, that would have been that would have been like the resin. <laughs> that would have been the the the. the, the Oh, the, the concentrate there. Like, I think that's something that was, They were smoking some Cubanos up there, right? Oh, there were. Every one of those fat pieces of shit had a fucking turd in their mouth. <laughs> they're, they're, standing on, they're standing on the... Overlooking the party and everyone dancing with these smoldering turds in their mouth, just looking incredibly pleased with themselves. I mean... Bloated as hell, too, or... Oh, I doubt that. No, they were drinking. Probably champagne. Oh, they were sharks? Were they shark yeah, people? Oh, shit, they were business yeah. sharks? Oh, yeah. Uh. yeah. There were two types of kind of, like, uh, there was this weird vibe because it's like, there's a lot of grandmas and grandpas there where you're like, oh, I mean, you're just a sweet old racist. Like, you, know, <laughs> <laughs> like, you, don't, you don't, don't know better. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like a dumb puppy, a puppy that keeps <laughs> shitting on the floor. And then, yeah, there were these people that were, like, almost terrifying to me. Like, businessmen. Like, politics and businessmen. And it was just like, boo, buddy. Like, these are the people, these are the people who, like, go to a retreat once a year and hunt human beings for sport. <laughs> right. I'm absolutely certain that they do. Like, those yeah. guys up there smoking the cigars, every one of them has killed someone in cold blood. And paid I saw, for the privilege of doing it. I saw one guy that was just fucking cut, man. He looked, I mean, he looked like in perfect shape. And I was like, that guy probably fights <laughs> once every two weeks. <laughs> like, because those guys, they look, I don't know, man. I, and some of them looked, low, like I, like Matt said, there were also those young people that were just like, ah, you know, the free market does sound, liberty sounds cool as hell. Like, I have a friend who is a high school uh my, I have a friend, in, I grew up in Wisconsin, and he he was a young Republican, uh, and he literally helped elect Paul Ryan in his, in his first attempt to, uh, to get a House seat, because literally he was a Civil War nerd and a Civil War reenactor, and Lincoln was a Republican, so therefore... He was decided oh. Republicans were a good party, you know? And of course, he was now a teenage he, kid. And of course, <laughs> now, now he looks back on that and he's like, oh my God, I want to murder that idiot for doing that. Uh, but I, like, I felt that vibe from some of those kids. But then, the, yeah, there are other ones who are these career minded sociopaths who are terrifying. Yeah. Yeah, mean. Just hunters. You know, all the hunters. Yeah. You know, like, I kind of like. 
and now I think I know how people felt when when like I was around in high school when I was a jerk and a mean like like where it was like I you would, these guys would walk in the room and I'd be first of all like I would fight any fucking one of them <laughs> like I would try. <laughs> but they would kill me. You would right? make an attempt to fight them. You're tell we want them to know if they're listening. We're not scared of you, okay, guys? A little bit. They're a little fucking. With, they're they're just. I like know what I you said, mean. Though. It just seems like for some reason they would want they would want to find a reason to fight you or to do something stupid or throw yeah. something or you know. Yeah, yeah. So like what we uh, it was really strange. But then like uh, we there was also a speech by I wanted I wanted to talk about Matt the woman. Yeah, she seemed like Melissa McCarthy was doing a character. <laughs> she was this big lady. She had a lot of energy. She had very rehearsed, stay, dramatic stage moves. And her whole thing was like, it was, it was fascinating because she was using religious uh, um, language, like redemption and, and all of this stuff that, that was clearly like from a from a Christian tradition. But she never explicitly was talking about religion. She was talking about like literally right wing uh, economics as as personal salvation. She told the stories of the a declaration she told the story of the Declaration of Independence, but she told it like a sermon. Yes. And like it was, these people have come together. Yes. Know? They might not have liked each other. But yeah. they they came together and they did this thing. And like uh she had a necklace. She had a big fucking gold necklace with a big charm that said fierce yep. across it. <laughs> wow. Like, people fucking lost their shit for her, man. Like the guy that had to come on after was like, oh, I got to follow that. I didn't think that was going to happen. So uh, keep an eye out for that, whoever that was. Yeah, that's really interesting as well because I've even noticed with like the people in my life and being around the stuff in DC that people will just out of habit, like not out of habit, just without thinking, say, "Oh, we can't. We, I don't want to do that in here. It's sacrilegious." Or you know, like to say something about the Constitution or Declaration of Independence, people kind of just call it sacrilegious. It has that vibe. That, but um, I'm glad that that lady was able to tie it together. I want to see yeah. that show. They do fucking love the const. They love the founding fathers, like Matt said. They really do. They love them. They, they gave they must, us. They, they would showed, blow every one of them if they could. <laughs> they showed a video at the beginning where they were like forging. They were making a torch and they were forging it in steel, a steel torch, like the torches we all know. <laughs> <laughs> so they were forging a a a a. a thing out of steel and your your wristband would light up with like like fire every time they would hit it yep. in a thing and they're telling this fucking really dramatic they're telling this really great and dramatic story and then a guy comes running in they said this torch has the flames of liberty are you ready to carry it on this fucking guy comes running in his torch goes out halfway up to the <laughs> stage it did and he had to have somebody light it again so he could light the big torch. And I was like, that's exactly how I fucking feel when you tell me America's a free country. Yeah, that's, now this is what I mean when I'm saying what happens if your car breaks down and you already owe money. Like, how does that – yeah. There's, there's, there's going to be hiccups in the system, yeah. guys. The fire goes Let's out not forget that. Yeah. <laughs> So we all want to get the fire there, but sometimes shit happens, and you can't punish us to hell for it happening. Okay? I mean, it really is it's like it's like we're all in this this bloody competition with each other, and there are going to be winners and losers. And if you lose, you lost, and that's take all it. there is to it. You take it. You exactly. lost. It. Swallow it. Well, Jeb yeah, actually exactly. one of one of Jeb's big things. Two of my favorite of his kind of things he bragged about was one he goes when I became governor Florida schools were 50 percent or were number 50 they were, they were number 50 yeah they were number 50 on the list of schools they were the worst fucking schools in the world I made them 50 percent better and I was like well shit dude that's still average like that's still, that's not any <laughs> he got him to he got him well, to and um What's yeah, he's no, well, now he's got yeah, now he's got a D, he's got him in an F minus instead of an <laughs> F minus minus. Yeah, and then was it Jeb Bush or Bobby Jindal, Matt, 
who told who said I thank God that oh yeah he's like when people Jeb Bush said when people ask me what it was like to be governor during like nine natural disasters yeah 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 yeah, yeah. he said we had nine we had a bunch of hurricanes we had we had all these natural disasters and how was it to be governor then and he said like it was the most rewarding experience of my life <laughs> because all of these people like I guess like needed him. Yeah, he got like the a thing, like all the a Hinton, dictator. All yeah. the Hinton and Horace looked up and said, "Save us!" And he said, "Okay, <laughs> it, I will it, let you use these government resources, people of the shore." Yep, just like just like he just made it rain on them, and then they all worshipped him, and he got that like spike of godly power. But I did. I actually got that. Um, this cup runneth over. It does. I did. I, I kind of know how it feels, though, now, because at, uh, there was a point where uh, a guy came out and said, before I give this speech, um, I'm going to, I, I got to say this, uh, will all the veterans stand up? And I was already <laughs> standing up, and this guy looked at me, and he just fucking saluted me. And I just, like, pointed. I gave Woo! him a point. He stole Valor. <laughs> He stole Valor inside the enemy territory. <laughs> he did. He stole the hell out of some Valor. It was it was effortless. It was an effortless Valor theft. Yeah. Was that guy's eyes like adoring the shit out of you, like all puppy dog and wet as hell? He was like... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he was respectful of me for sure. I can feel his Here, respect. take a piece of me. Hey, take a piece of me with you. <laughs> I'm too weak to carry on. <laughs> I fight in the war on drugs. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, that's true. We're warriors. <laughs> so, sure. But he, but, um. You should have made that guy, like, get you a drink or something. He <laughs> yeah, done hey, buddy. Hey, buddy. I need a help on. Ah, this red is just biting my ass. <laughs> that would have been smart. But, like, I just kind of, I, I, I walked away, actually. I got real creeped out by the fucking Secret Service man. Cause I think Those I think guys it, are terrifying. <laughs> yeah. I think a thing that that Matt and I didn't haven't talked about yet on the show is that we were high as fuck at this thing. <laughs> yeah, you always had a big ass blunt, right? Repacked black and mild. Yeah, I repacked a black and mild with with some really good weed, and then uh, we smoked that and we ate firecrackers. So like, uh, we were just fucking really high at this thing. And I was standing in like the middle of the in the middle of the front row, and I had a blunt in my bag, like I had a half smoked blunt in my bag. And this Oof. fucking secret security or secret service man starts talking into his sleeve, and I can see yeah. the little microphone coming out of his sleeve. And I was like, I'm gonna get the fuck out of here now. <laughs> yeah, that's odd. That I get, was I get, creepy. I get. I have seen that a few times here in D.C. as well. Now that we spend more time at these big events. Like, you'll see snipers on roofs and shit, and you're just like, ugh, or people walking around with big-ass guns or talking into their shirts a lot. Yeah. yeah that, but, yeah, I, I, I'm stoned, but I would not want to be in an enclosed area with that. Hell no. Well, yeah. Probably it would, to you guys. You guys are way mentally, you're mentally more strong than most to, to put I, up with that shit. I think it was weirder because I was stoned. Because, like, when we checked in, we ate an edible we, before we smoked anything. Because it was only 11.15 in the morning. It's like, come on, fucking. You're not going to. I don't usually smoke blunts at 11.15 in the morning. But uh, so, we, so we eat these edibles and, and we go. We get up there. We walk in. We get our credentials. And as we're standing. <laughs> in, from, let, let's, let's point it out. We got our credentials from an uh, elderly gentleman named Durrell Tootle. According, <laughs> this is... according to his laminate, his name was Durrell Tootle. Somebody just hit the keyboard. That's and, what they did. <laughs> and then printed up his credential, and we were just... Uh, for a moment, I name. thought that like, we were in a, a very elaborate like sting operation or like some sort of punking, because it's like, there's no... Because like, my, jo my job on Twitter, essentially, is to make up goofy names for conservatives. And like, literally the first person I encounter in this building <laughs> is named Girl Tootle, which is a name that is way better than any I have ever imagined. <laughs> And I'm like, this motherfucker, is a, there's a guy named Turtle Tootle in front of me? Are you serious? I know. I, know. I would have felt like that was a giant red flag. Like, oh, fuck, this is a setup. They, yeah. they, they know I, they, they're going to get me. And Cause, yeah, because like, like, like Brian said, it was starting to come on. You know, the, the edibles were starting to come on. And, and, and this fucking guy, had, he couldn't. Durrell had a problem. Durrell Tootle. 
Daryl could not find Brian's uh, accreditation because well, it was under my name and he couldn't do the procedure because, as he admitted to us, he had skipped orientation. <laughs> okay. He this, was a little, okay. This shirker. This yeah, shirker. I know. These are the fucking people that are like, if you just work hard enough, you'll you'll finally you'll feel you'll get the prosperity that everybody's yeah. fucking running this around is... talking about at this convention. Yeah, but this guy's a freaking rotter. They got a rotter in their midst. <laughs> <laughs> he was like, I'm sorry, I didn't go to the training. I bet you I'd have been able to find that if I had gone to the training. Dural Tootle, man, that seems like that can't be a real person's name. And um, that's Dural Tootle. I started to get really, I started to get so nervous, Brett, because, I mean, like, we, we do an anarchist radio show that, like, the comp, we explicitly say we're anarchists on the radio in this city, and, like, all you'd have to do is Google my name to find out, like, this motherfucker is not here for prosperity. He's, <laughs> <laughs> he's a, if he sees something, he'll steal that shit. So keep it locked up. He's not here. He's not here for. Li so I started thinking like they probably just aren't gonna let me in or something. Like they. Mr. They, Quimby, here's your refund. We'd like to see you out the door. Yeah, please. Let's get it. Let's get you out of here. But when they finally let me in, and I, I, I kind of stepped away, and I had to get away from the group of ten cops just standing there for no reason. <laughs> Because there's, like, hardly anybody there, and there's, like, five cops. So, like, I get – we we start to walk around, and, and I start to get acclimated, and we walk down Radio Row. Yeah, there wasn't a lot of action on Radio Row. No. Well, what was Radio Row? It's where all the radio shows record. All, all, all the right-wing radio shows, including uh, one – what was it called? The, the, the Snark, Snark Factor. The Snark Factor, yeah. I don't know who – Ooh, that sounds, sounds biting. You should get it, Brett. You listen to you should listen to a, a snark factor. I'll listen. I'm <laughs> going to. I promise. I promise to you. I will listen to it. I'm interested. I, I need to hear what he's snarky about. What what's all the snark? What's all the fun? Cause funny I, because like snark is like is usually associated with like you know gawker and sort of like vaguely leftist people online making fun of everybody. It's like the comical didn't... conservatives. Like that guy's not funny. So I kind of yeah didn't like. Greg Gutfeld, doesn't he have a big campaign against, like, snarky people, basically? Yeah, exactly. Like, oh, you're so cool. You're so hip. You're not cool. <laughs> yeah, you, you're not you, hip. You, you suck. You think our prosperity is shit, but I, yeah. I live for prosperity. Exactly. You're so fucking cool. So just, don't even care about... Yeah, so I'm just wondering how these guys can, like, pull off that sort of, like, you know, pervasive skepticism that snark sort of represents... Uh, just like the comical conservative, you know, like he's trying to be funny, but literally every post of his is, I am disgusted. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is a fucking abomination against humanity. Like, whoa, co comedy guy. What's yeah, that? exactly. So uh, my guess is when you do listen to the, the snark factor, that's not actually going to be terribly snarky. It's probably going to be like, can you believe that after three years, we still don't have answers about what happened at Benghazi? It's going to be a bunch of meme type logic. Well, we'll see. I'm I'm guessing more like get ready to order from a computer if you want to raise minimum wage. Yeah. I said it. Yeah. <laughs> I said it. Yeah, there'll probably be a lot of I said it in yeah. the snark factor. Oh, ni yeah, nice minimum wage there. Nice $15 minimum wage there. Meet your replacement. Yeah. 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 So there was Radio Row just but made fun of a bunch of poor people. High five. <laughs> Um, Radio Row. Yeah, that was weird. Like, like I said, we ought to see if we can get in Radio Row at one of these things, Brad. That would be amazing. Yeah, I think so, man. I didn't know that was going. How, how? I wonder how they knew about that. Now that we know, though, I think yeah, you guys could have done a show while you were there. There were podcasts there. There were like, but like I said, what? Who are you going to get on? You know, there's nobody fucking walking I by. <laughs> There's nobody there. That, like, I, I, yeah, you could ask any of the cops, like, hey, guys, want to talk about freedom and prosperity? They're like, this is double duty. It pays double double, double time. You guys want to talk cops, about Cops, that picture, I'm sorry, I'm just thinking Brian posted a picture of the lobby, and he said, check it out, dude, and it was like ten cops standing in a room with four people sitting down in a chair who looked like they were just too tired and had to, had to sit down immediately. It was it was sparsely attended. I will say, like we don't have to worry about them taking. I'm not scared anymore. 
Like, at all. I mean, you think nothing... that's... The... Do you agree with that, Matt? Is that your takeaway? Well, I mean, like, they, they, they are able to manufacture the illusion of mass approval of their policies by the money that they have. But, yeah, it really did show that in terms of, like, getting people... Because, like... You literally, I mean, this is these are the people from all over the country. They're trying to make a country, and literally, like Ber- Bernie Sanders gets more people, and Donald Trump, for that matter, can get more people, you know, in a in an air, unair conditioned, uh, you know, school basement, you know, on a Tuesday night than these people did over the weekend. But because, like, in terms of the the money, sort of gives this I, 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 uh, illusion of of uh, consensus and m- grassroots quotation marks. Yeah. But, yeah, like in reality, it's a bunch of angry. It's like you know, some angry grandparents who wish their kids would call more, and then they're psychotically career obsessed grandkids, and that was it. Yeah, political science people, like some kids that are in politi- that take political science, are young Republicans at school. Yeah. They get certified activist degree. You yeah. could be. I think, like I said earlier, two hundred fifty bucks, you become a certified activist. I've thought about it, but I don't want to give them my <laughs> two fifty. It's a good investment. Yeah, if you can get a ten dollar, I mean, I'll bet you the job you can get with that certification is one of those collecting, uh, uh, collecting yeah. signatures for right to work, which is, I, I wouldn't want to do that. <laughs> yeah, you're buying in, and you're right. A lot of money does touch it, uh, uh, does you know make their thing look huge because I've been using that Amazon service where they pay you like a nickel to do some like really quick task, and there is a few times now where I've been paid like 10 cents to just go vote for some website or to like been offered to, to get paid money to sign like petitions for like clean coal shit. You know, like coal in, the coal industry will pay a shitload of money to hire people to just go online and put their name on a change.org thing, you know, saying that, that they, we want more coal production and shit. Loving this coal. There was a kid, there was a young teen there wearing a shirt that said, I heart fossil fuels. And I was like, yeah. I can't wait till you're fucking choking up your lung. When you're <laughs> He's a shit. Yeah, we got to find him. How do we find him? This is, we need to like be able to tag and tag those specimens. Like when you yeah. wanted to run it, I want to be able to track that son of a bitch and know what happens. Yeah, it, it's it's a. It, I mean, there's there are attractive, in a weird. I can see why people would say like, man, I can have everything I want, and usually all they really want is probably what they have. Like a lot of those people are probably they their idea of what their prosperity is is that they have like a jet ski or a fucking <laughs> they they were able to put a Florida room on right. their fucking yeah, house. Yeah. They, they want a detached garage. Yeah, they want a man cave in the basement. Yeah. Yeah, and that's where and that's where a lot of the the uh the money, the capitalism and all the the political scrutiny of it goes is you think of parents that finally got to a house to retire in, which is great. I mean, us fucking commie people want that shit too, you know? It's like their idea of prosperity is just so pathetic compared to what, like, the Koch brothers are living, and then what we want people to have, which is, you know, basic fucking access to services. You know, they're mad that people are going to get paid enough to have a real bed instead of sleeping on a blow-up mattress. I mean, I, I, I think a lot of it really... Hello? Oh, a lot of it really is is that they do see a, um, like, they they know... I think it's a subconscious level they realize how far they are from their aspirational figures, the rich guys like the Cokes. But they also, at the same time, are deeply aware of how close they are to the pores. <laughs> and, is... they, and they do not... They want the separation between them and the pores to be as large as possible in order that... to separate them. That, that And there's just this anxiety that, like, at any moment that could happen and, like, the, the extent to which that they can, like... Uh, uh, look down on them and 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 have pol- and, and 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 support policies that separate them from them is is really everything because they they, they kind of I think at a certain level they know they'll never be the Koch brothers but they also are afraid that they could be poor and they want to yeah, make sure it, yeah and then you're right then the, the other the the other ugly naked guys are just in a sense they realize hey this system is fucked up but i'm not going to i'm not going to be against it i i'm there's nothing i can probably do to change it i'm just going to try to maximize my efforts in it you know it's yeah. you know hey it's, it's the trump hey white people are winning you know what right. can i say how we're going to change this shit white people is winning and you yeah. know this is what this is how we want things to go from now on cuz we want our doodads and our gadgets and and all of our uh, malls 
filled yeah. with shit. And that's and that's where Taffer comes in. Yes, uh, Taffer. To come in everybody into shape. Yeah, Rod should have been a presidential candidate. Oh, absolutely. Well, he's well. I kind of thought because like his presentation has that has the same sort of uh, self conscious theatricality of like a Trump, but he's not a wild card. He's clearly there for hire, you know. And so it's sort of an attempt to sort of take that wrestling and uh, you know just the emotional, obvious stagecraft, but without the sort of wild card nature of a Trump who has the ability because of his money to kind of say whatever he wants. Trump. Uh, Taffer is a hired gun. He'll come yeah, in he and did, say what you want him to say. He paid a bunch He'll of use, whiz. He paid, paid some right wing whiz kids to put together graphic elements and the whole thing, and then he can just walk out there and do his thing and, and go. So yeah, so we had we had Jeb, or we had the co CEO of Americans Prosperity. We had Jeb. We had some jobbers. We had uh, That's a, jobbers. There's some people yeah. like they would just announce them, and you'd be like, "Fob out of here." We <laughs> would, <laughs> they announced the guy after Jeb, and I was like, "Let's go smoke this." I believe, blood. I believe he was a senator from Georgia. I mean, no one cares on earth. Uh, and then Jindal came out, and then we got the crazy Melissa McCarthy lady who gave us the religious experience of capitalism. And wow, then, me so far. Yeah, and then at the end, last very last guy was Taffer, and he comes out, and he's just like a force of nature. He screams the entire time. There's no modulation. He screams the whole thing. It's uh, like an 80s, it's, it's a late 80s wrestling promo. It's mm -hmm. fucking Hulk Hogan. Like, he, he, he's gas. he seemed like one of those guys that were fucking amped up on speed and steroids that would just fucking stand there and scream at the camera for 15 minutes. Like, he didn't just, calm yeah. down. He's a huge dude, and he's kind of fat, but his fat is like must. It's like it's all muscle and power. He's, he's a, a mountain. He's a he's giant a mountain. mountain that just comes slides like, out onto the like, stage. He's like he's like a he's like a late capitalist uh, Judge Holden from uh, Blood Meridian, <laughs> with a with but instead of being an albino, <laughs> he took like a, a marker, a black magic marker, and painted his hair and eyebrows on. Uh, <laughs> and he just comes out. Okay. Yeah, I know what you mean. He's just screaming, and and the premise of it, and what I found interesting is, is that it was very so short. It was the shortest speech by long, you know, because he's got things to do. Uh, he's got to help Ripper Owens and his and his failing bar, uh, and he screams. But his whole thing is basically small business, and it fits into the general idea, you know, of people embracing competition and embracing capitalism and becoming successful that way. And so he's like, the key to that is small business. And he's like pointing at people and yelling at them about how they're, they need to support small business. And he's yelling at them to get up and, and, and pledge that they will support small business. And it's kind of a generic speech. There's a section about Obamacare and how it was too complicated and how it, it creates you know too many uh, burdens for small businessmen to comply with. Uh, but that it's that was like literally like three or four lines, and I have a feeling that they were added because this is a more partisan crowd, and that his speech is sort of a thing he could give to anybody, he could give to any trade organization, and then because this is more uh, partisan and more right wing, it's like yeah, throw in some stuff about Obamacare because the rest of it is very vague. He complains about regulations and how they stifle small business, but he never says anything specifically, and he also never makes any specific. Uh, uh, endorsements of policy to help small business. He just says small business is the army of America. We need to make it better. We need to we need to pledge to make small business America's greatest thing. That was it. It was like, like great. I, I said on Twitter, he was like Mussolini. It was like small business alone shall move the wheels of history. Yeah, yeah. He and, and he kind of I. I don't know how into John Taffer. I cheered like he was in a fucking punk band, like when my favorite band came out. And then I ran up front, and I actually sat front row center for him. So that was like he. I saw. Just, yeah, your pictures were great. I saw Brian. I'm going to try to put this together, making a lot of promises on this show. But Brian has like 15 images. I was like, why do you take a video? He was like, I took these pictures. And then when you see the transition. It just his like his arms are wide and he's looking out at the crowd like everyone's dumb. And then there's a picture of him and he's like chopping his hand and looking down like somebody's really dumb. It's just it's just 
screaming he, 15 he different really angry faces. Us. He felt really mad at us. It's like he came out like he had, like we all worked, we all owned the bar, and he had been backstage, which was the kitchen, and he saw roaches, and he was like coming out to yell at us because this is your this is your America. Why are you letting these small businesses die? You're you making care? small businesses sick. <laughs> they need our help. God damn it. He was Bulls. he was fucking really mad. Like and like the other, you're right about him not maybe being as right wing because he obviously would believe in health regulations. I would think like because he does yell at people about them making people sick all the time. But man, he yeah. The, there's really I don't know. I mean, I guess the only time I ever hear about business regulations is from like the Chamber of Commerce, which is run by like the Koch brothers and shit. So it's Basically, always seen. Yeah. So, like, the small business people, I don't think, are – they would rather have the government hire people like John Taffer to give them business advice than worry about, like, the regulations and shit. John Taffer, though, sounds like a um, – I mean, I wish I could have got yelled at him. Did you feel, like, the, the wind from the air when he was screaming? I did, yeah. I mean, like, he, he was pretty powerful for me. I was – it was. Of... I've really never seen that because, like, the, the way that most people pr approach public speaking is you create crescendos and you create sort of a story, and you're up and you're down, and you modulate and you go right. high and then you go low. It was like just a Harley opened up, <laughs> just like going 75 miles an hour down the highway, and the whole time just, he, has one, he has one speed. Like there's no moments of grace. There's no mo there's no pauses. There's no you know drama. There's no attempt to like create any kind of a sense of of contrast. It's just straight screaming. Yeah. He well, I know. He screamed at us for ten straight minutes. And I understand like, like, walk. He walked. He would have he would have had a heart attack or well, he would have had a brain hemorrhage if he kept up because he, he was screaming the entire time. And he walks the stage. He'll he'll stand at the podium. But then, like, he'll get really mad and decide to walk to the side of the stage and start pointing at people and yelling at them, too. Like, he he points at the audience a lot, too. Like, he's very yeah. Oh, yeah. He, 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 he basically accused the audience of selling, of letting small businesses fail. Like, <laughs> we, small businesses are failing. Who, are you going to help them? Are you going to help them? He also like, had It this was like Jacques. He had this whole like, who's part of our small business army? And he said he used a lot of war language yes, about the, the small he said business. Small army. business was the army of America. Yeah, <laughs> like I said, it yeah. was like Mussolini. That sounds like I think the 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 method that he's using is just basically deciding he's going to yell at the top of his lungs. So he's challenging himself to come up with something to say, and that's like putting it all in. Like I'm going to yell something at the top of my lungs, so it better be good. You know, well, it's the same strategy I use when I make up like silly songs in the, in like Sunday morning. Like just whatever, just you got to be able to say something because you're going to scream it. <laughs> yeah, I, and I and I think that like uh, he fe what I don't know what he said. I don't know a lot of what he said. Like it, <laughs> right, I I want you to understand that like it fucking washed over me like. I don't know. I felt it was like surprisingly so wonky. He 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 rattled off a bunch of statistics. Yeah. About the decline of small business and how how many small businesses is closed in America. Some real round crashed. numbers on those statistics. Since I'm the, sure, right? Yeah. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. Since, and I've, since the fall of 2000 or since the 2008 collapse, he's like since 2008, 500 million small businesses have closed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there used yeah. to be um, there used to be seven trillion small businesses in America. <laughs> I'm less than seven. <laughs> I felt like he fucking. I felt like that guy grabbed me by my shoulders and shook me for ten minutes and then walked out of the room. It That's was like it was like putting your head by an industrial uh, blow dryer. And, and just I, having it like blow your hair back. Yeah, and I want to say another thing that's really telling about John Taffer that was beautiful to me was like after Bobby Jindal's speech, he walked to the edge of the stage and shook people's hands, and he yeah. everybody wanted to shake his hand so bad that like he couldn't leave, and it was like this charming moment. And then when John Taffer was done, that dude turned around. Thank you! Turned around and walked off the stage. Yeah, yeah. You, you stepped no off the stage. No glad handing there. No glad handing. 
No. I've got another giant steak to eat. <laughs> Me and the boy, I'm doing another one of these. The only other thing I remember from his speech was that he was talking about the bar he's currently rescuing for the former replacement lead singer of Judas Priest, Tim Ripper Owens. Tim Ripper <laughs> Owens, really? Yeah. He's, he's in the failing bar business now? Yeah, the guy that Rockstar is based on. So if you ever wondered, if you ever wanted a Rockstar sequel, well... <laughs> <laughs> this is a great way to Marky Mark is red hot too, and I think he's I, I got a good enough the, mood the, that he'd the, sign the, up. The idea, the I, oh my god, I'm dying at the idea of a <laughs> film with with Mark Wahlberg getting yelled at on screen with that like look of puzzled anger on his face that he always gets. That's like because Mark Wahlberg is a good actor when he's playing someone who is angry and confused at the same time. <laughs> yeah, he's clueless as hell. And so, like, someone's screaming at him about how his bar is shitty, and he's just, like, he's mad and confused at the same time. He'd be great. But I was trying to think who'd play Taffer, and it's like, it, Taffer would have to play himself. Yeah, he, he, well, that, that, yeah. he he'd yell at him if they didn't choose him. Yeah. There's nobody that could add Josh Brolin. Maybe you could probably have. Man, he's got that slab-like head. That's true, but I just don't think he could well belt it out. Like Taffer he has, seems so Taffer Gandolfini, has no, like the egg, Gandolfini, like the Eggman. Gandolfini could have pulled it off. Sadly, R.I.P. to him. Uh, yeah. But yeah, in the absence of Gandolfini, I think it, it, he's the only man who could do it. Yeah. So th yeah. He uh he did a book signing after that, but I'm sure it was kept a very short line. I, I mean, yeah. like I don't, I don't think he signed very many books. I I I mean, for some reason, him leaving like a shot like that was like part of you worries. Oh no, I know what I was gonna say about the Ripper Owens thing. He said he was driving around in the car with the mayor that day, looking at the town, like all these small businesses are failing. He was in town to help out a failing bar, and then the mayor was like, "Hey, Taff, I'm gonna let me show this to you, man. It's real sad." And they roll down Main Street and look at all the boarded up small businesses. Yeah, yeah, that's what he. I mean, that's what he claims. He probably didn't drive them by the Walmart that has a full parking lot. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the thing. Like, uh, I mean, I I did not spend a lot of time in. Uh, Columbus, but like from what I understand, it's like the only city in Ohio that's gaining population. Yeah, it's yeah. Cle Cleveland is lo Cleveland is really leveling yeah. out, and, uh, and I don't Cincinnati, think Cincinnati, Cincinnati has been like stagnant for like the last twenty years. Like I was walking around downtown, and there's plenty of there's tons of open office and small business space down here. But I got to imagine that Columbus actually probably doesn't have that much yeah. extra capacity. Yeah, I I mean like I, I don't know, man. It didn't seem like a lot of people there were, lived in a city at all. Like I Probably I don't not, yeah. I I think a very small percentage of those people live anywhere where they're like uh, uh, most of the people there live somewhere with five digits in the address number, which is <laughs> that means they live in the country, I guess. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah I think they're mostly like yeah, they're like guys who run like a, you know, like a like a stationary store in a in a in a town with maybe fifty thousand people in it. <laughs> a fucking steak escape. Most of them probably. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like a Foot Locker franchisee. Yeah. Yeah, most of the people there. I mean, I don't see them be like th those. Aren't the people that are like, I want to own my own business because it's like a creative thing. It's like I want to own my own business because it's a license to print money. I'm gonna open up a fucking Quiznos. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I've got six Quiznoses in the in the in the, in the northern Arkansas area, and I got to tell you, these punk kids—they don't work very hard. They don't deserve fifteen dollars an hour. I'll tell you, I have to ride their ass every day, or they'd be hanging around, making out, grabbing ass, smoking weed. If I wasn't there, riding their ass every day, no way in hell do they deserve fifteen dollars an hour. I'll fucking close all those stores and burn them for the insurance money before I pay those punks fifteen dollars an hour. They keep they keep saying that I'm that I'm not on fleek. What the hell does that mean? <laughs> yeah. Oh man. Yeah, what a <sighs> fucking experience though, man. Then we went to the Buckeye Bash afterwards, which was yeah. their party. Cash bar, those cheap bastards. Before that is that, astonishing though, me. That is so uncouth. That's just unseemly. 
before we did that, though, uh, we gave our passes because there was another day. Uh, the Saturday had another session, but there was no taffer, so I did not give a shit. Uh, and they were going to have Marco Rubio and Rick Perry talk and some other chumps. Uh, but we weren't going to be there, so we saw some protesters who were still hanging around, and they had made these giant heads of Scott Walker and Marco Rubio and uh, Jeb Bush. And so we gave them our passes. Uh, I don't know what they did with them. I, I I haven't seen the news. You know, I don't think anyone got arrested, so it wasn't too intense. But I hope they yeah. had fun with them. Yeah. yeah, hopefully there was some interaction. At least maybe there was a little bit of turmoil. Yeah, mm -hmm. and that somebody, hopefully somebody. I'm hoping they heckled the thing. I like. I I think they would have the same reaction uh, Matt and I did when we got in there. Though it's like I'd like to bust this whole thing up, and then you start looking around. And you're like, bust what up? Really? There's nothing yeah. here. I mean, maybe you could yell during the speeches, but, like, there's such a weird, like, amped-up wrestling attitude anyway that, like, you, they wouldn't, A, be able to hear you, or they'd, like, literally eat you there. They yeah. Would, like, like, strip your flesh like a piranha before you even got another <laughs> bird out. Hey, bring the sissy boy up here. We're going to show him what a what a <laughs> Ivy School flogging's really like. <laughs> well, that was something, because I was trying to get audio for the show, and the next time something like this happens, my plan is to wear a white t-shirt and write, I'm a leftist, do you want to talk to me on it, and just walk around <laughs> until one of them stops me and starts yelling at me for being a leftist. Because, like, I, I'll bet you they would have talked to me if, I know, if they had no, like, I feel like they knew I wasn't, I didn't really belong. You know what I mean? <laughs> and as we found out, a lot of them are, they're lot, like we said, like these people are literally career people who work for politicians. Like we went up to some guys and they were like, we can't talk on on, uh, on the record on the radio because we work for candidates. And so they, then they are, ran separate are, directions. Yeah, right. These people are all, these people are all, uh, you know, hired guns. But before that, I overheard them. They were talking about, you know, they were bitching about the fact that Scott Walker didn't show up and how he was showing disrespect. And and, and the fact that he didn't, obviously he wasn't serious about winning because if he was serious, he would have been there. And then they were talking about, because Ted Cruz was the opener for the second day. And uh, they said that, one of them said, I, I, uh, Ted Cruz is coming. I think he's going to blow the roof off the joint. <laughs> oh, man, it's gonna be... like, you know what? Uh, a joint where a simpering, you know, melted mannequin face like Ted Cruz blows the roof off the joint is a joint that I don't want to be anywhere near. Where's he the governor? Where's he a, where's He's a he senator from? from Texas. He's from Texas. That's why he looks all melted and kind of small. <laughs> yeah, lots of the sun out there. Lots of okay. the sun's hot. That why Canadian does he look skin don't, don't do too well in the hot sun. Like, he looks sick, man, but he's got some conservative values. I'll tell you that. There were two guys behind me when we were waiting to go to the auditorium, and they were talking about who they were into and stuff. And one of the guys, this is so sad, because, like, I was like this. The, the, I was like this when I was a teenager. This guy was like, I was as close to Ben Carson as I am to you right now. <laughs> and I, I got to tell you something. That guy is eloquent. <laughs> and he's just such an eloquent speaker. And the other guy's like, oh, yeah, I love him. I also love Ted Cruz. And uh, he named, uh, I, I think he said, and I think Bobby Jindal's electric. And I'm just like, what in the <laughs> holy <laughs> fucking where in the hell am I right now? <laughs> the, the human experience that leads you to say the words, Bobby Jindal is electric. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, it's, like, it's like a Lovecraft thing. I can't even conceive of it. It's so horrifying to think of what happened in your life that you look at Bobby Jindal squeezing off some, like, uh, adrenal nerd speak, and you're like, yes, this is my matter. We're going to do something about this. We're going to hold someone accountable. He said so many He said so many funny things. He was like, I'm going to say something right now. That is not politically that's not politically correct at all. This is going to make the politically correct people in this room mad, which there were none. Probably. Yeah. <laughs> Matt and I were the yeah. only two. You were you were the PC police in the crowd. Yeah, yeah. he goes like this. I, America. I tried to I tried to make a citizen's arrest, but nobody paid attention. <laughs> he, he goes. America's headed in the wrong direction. 
I'm tired of hyphenated Americans. And I was like, oh, that crowd, that all-white crowd, not a, not a hyphen in the fucking room, stood up and just started cheering. Yeah, that was so weird is that he had, like, it was actually, like, a well-crafted speech in that it had a sort of a catchphrase that he returned to, and it was the uh, the idea of America is slipping away. And it's like, geez, that is some grim shit. <laughs> you know, that, yeah. that, do you really, do you really, I, but the thing is, like, everybody, I guess, like, because everybody's, all the right-wingers are in this sort of, this weird defeatist anger, I think that's why Trump's so popular, is because they feel like they're losing, and they're really mad about it, but, like, yeah. the problem no, no. is, you gotta, like, Jindal says, the American dream is slipping away, now, how is that supposed to motivate anybody? <laughs> Trump says, on his hat, nonetheless, make America great again, and so, you know, it it has it comes from the same premise of we're fucked, but it says unlike Jindal, who's literally just saying yeah everything's fucked, he's saying we're gonna unfuck it. Yeah, and I think that's why Trump is definitely you know appealing to people. Well, didn't you and and I uh, and 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 didn't you read hear uh, uh some excerpts from Ted Cruz's uh, a guy reading a uh, 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 local conservative radio host on your way down here from. Uh, on your way up here from Cincinnati, a guy that was saying had some previews of Ted Cruz's speech, and he was going to tell people to man up, like he was going to stand on. No, that stage. was Jindal, and he didn't oh, say that. He did. Like, he did like, though. He yeah. did a man up. He did. He cut a man up promo though. He really man up. Stuff. Yeah. Well, the whole thing. Yeah. The, the, like he was. Well, you know he was proposing ins insane stuff that was either, in the case of the sanctuary cities thing, not something a president could do. Or the other thing he said that was not politically correct or quote unquote legal <laughs> was using every arm of the federal government to persecute Planned Parenthood uh, into oblivion. So like have, sicking the IRS on them, you know, sicking all the regulatory agencies on them. Which of course that's like that's black letter illegal. That's that's called a bill of attainder. That's part like English common law is based on the premise that that's illegal. You can't name an organization and specifically target them. You target a behavior, you know, as illegal, and then you prosecute or investigate people who who commit it. You can't say, X, this person or this group needs to be persecuted. It's, yeah, he it, said he would use... X, X can be persecuted. So he literally is saying, fuck all of that. Fuck the entire tradition of English common law. We're going to say Planned Parenthood is going out of business, and we're going to use all of the government's... Uh, uh, agencies to all of the big government regulatory agencies that he hates. We're gonna sick them all on Planned Parenthood, and Basically, like so, it's like everything he was saying was either illegal or literally not something he could do. Or it was um, in the case of that hyphenated American thing. Sounds to me like the old John Wayne divided American thing. It sounds like he's just taking that and using that whole premise in a yeah. way to just be like that tough guy. Like, listen up. You ain't a divided American anymore. You're just American, and this is how you live. This is the, well, the new fuck, law of the land. It's called America. You have to follow the law. He was literally ripping off Woodrow Wilson, our, one of our most racist presidents. He had famously did a speech about the dangers of hyphenated Americans. If I remember, he said, uh, I'll paraphrase, he said something like, the hyphen is like a dagger pointed at the heart of America. <laughs> That's good. That's this fucking the, good. I'd be racist as hell. But it's, right. I'd, I'd be this, throwing everybody out. This is the president who spoke, who freaking screened Birth of a Nation in the White House, you know, this, and resegregated uh, the federal, uh, you know, federal office buildings. That's the guy that Jindal is cribbing from with the hyphenated American. <laughs> yeah, that's, I mean, that's, that's the room, you guys. You guys only had to pay, what, $150 to get this experience? <laughs> yeah, I know. I what, a, what a steal. <laughs> it was worth it for, I, well, I mean, you know. You got some really had, great swag. You guys, your swag bag, I think you had a lot of people drooling with that swag bag. One of, the, stuff. one of the fucking weirdest things in that swag bag is that I only picked up one. I went to one booth and picked something up, and it was the Young American Conservatives. And all they were handing out was they had a calendar with Ronald Reagan on all the 
months. <laughs> they had a bookmark with Ronald Reagan on it, and then they had posters, like fucking full size, like you would hang them up in your room, like I had with like uh, I don't know corn hanging up in my room uh, when my, in my room when I was a kid. They had Ronald Reagan posters, and I was like, man, you ain't getting the millennials with this. This is bad outreach. Yeah, and young people are going to put up a six-foot-tall Ronald Reagan to hang in their room with them. Yeah, they don't want to see what those kids are going to do with that, that Reagan poster if they have a Sharpie in their hand. It was just weird, That's man. That's fun. It, just... it was weird, though. The Reagan also, the bookmark, I love that bookmark because he looks like a tough fisherman Reagan. He's wearing, like, a ski cap, like a knit cap, right? Yeah. And Does he's... he look like a Marlon Brando type in that? I think they put his head on Marlon Brando. There's no way that's really Ronald Reagan. Okay, so it's just a fun meme, a memeify. Yeah, yeah. That is the most fun thing they had, though. The calendar really is just Reagan in jeans. Or and, like Reagan on a rant. One of them is him clearing fucking brush. Because conservatives love to clear brush for some insane reason. It hard because it, Wild West, I don't know. But they love it. Because then you can find the way. Well, we'll clear up. Well, you guys complaining about we ain't shit to do. We gotta clear up all this brush. We'll find a way to go to take this America into prosperity and liberty and freedom. <laughs> The one thing that I was I didn't even realize at first is one of the things we got was a book about Ben Carson and why he should be president from a group that was pimping uh, Ben Carson, who did not speak, by the way, uh, because he was too busy napping, because he always looks like he's just got out, done with a nap. Um, and it was called The Rx for America. <laughs> and I was like, that's funny. And it wasn't until like a day later I looked at it and I saw the author of it. It was written by John Philip Sousa the Fourth. Who the fuck the, is that? He's the great grandson of the March King, John Philip Sousa, the guy who wrote all of our our most cherished uh, um, big band marching band songs. Invented <laughs> so, inventor of the sousaphone, which is a which is a tuba that you can like wear while marching. And now he's ch now he's chilling. His great grandson. His, pro his progeny is chilling. There's a shilling for Ben Carson. Yeah, and the funniest thing is that the back of the book is doing his bio says, uh, you know, he's following in his great grandfather's footsteps, not musically because apparently the kid has the guy has no talent, but by making America great and you know reminding people that America is awesome. Yeah, he loves fucking America, though, he, man. He really and does. they love him. They re I think Ben Carson is a big fucking deal with, with a lot of the people at this right, thing. He's, he's, he's like polling a third pretty consistently. It's, it's Trump by a huge margin, then Jeb, and then Ben Carson. That's Carson's, the, a, Carson's ahead of Cruz and Rand Paul and Scott Walker, all those guys. He's ahead of them all. Kasich. Uh, Agreed. My straw polls with just people I know the conservatives are bringing up. Like I'm, I heard recently Dr. Ben Carson had uh, <laughs> an interesting flat tax or whatever the you know whatever garbledy gook it is. Well, that's yeah. the funny thing is like he is and and he has actually improved his standing after the first debate, uh, probably more than anyone. And he had the most insane answers of anyone during the first debate. <laughs> well, like refresh said, me, refresh me. Well, uh, what he talked about his tax policy, and he said that taxes should be more like tithes at church. Okay. I, don't, I literally I, don't I even can know dig what that, that means. I like, <laughs> do you mean it's voluntary? I, mean, I like that. Yeah, I know. I say now that I want to vote for Ben Carson. Yeah. <laughs> uh, he said at one point that uh, that like we we shouldn't we should let our uh, military and intelligence do whatever they need to do to stop terrorism and not ask any questions. In response to a question about ter about torture, basically yeah. saying, just let them do what they need to do, i.e., torture people. And then at one point, he was, and this was in, in talking about the taxes. He said, you know, we people want to be fair, and I think that God is a pretty fair guy. <laughs> I mean, you know, he drinks and sometimes he gets mad and he punishes a lot of us in huge tragedies sometimes, but he means well. He also, yeah, he's like, a, he just he like he just said gibberish, and now he's yeah. He's, that's and then also I mean I, I think it's cute. He proves he's an idiot if he thinks that taxes are going to be like tithing at church, and somehow we're going to be able to afford a military. Yeah, yeah. You can't get rid of the military, otherwise I wouldn't have got any of that valor at this summit. <laughs> 
He just he 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 had his swag bag was Brian's swag bag was just chock a block with ba- Valor when he left. Just so, spilling like, over. It's spilling amazing. Spilling over man. with Valor. And you go get a free haircut, and you get a free haircut and a grand slam at Denny's. <laughs> <laughs> I did tell him somebody somebody saluted me earlier. This meal will be all free on you. This meal's on yeah. you, <laughs> ma'am. I've been saluted. <laughs> Hey, you haven't been saluted today, have you? No, I didn't think so. <laughs> Free Grand Slam breakfast. Man, that fucking party, though, at the end. Before before we finish, I want to just say, we went back up to this fucking party yeah, at yeah. the end. Yeah, right. After we gave away our passes, we were able to get in because our names were in the database, thankfully. Yeah. Well, so we are in the Koch Brothers database now. We are. Um, <laughs> we went On the this, radar. We went to this party. Now, um, I'm going to have Brett help out here. It was on. It was at a place called Park Street Tavern, and Park Street is a part okay. of is a part it's of Columbus, where everybody fights and people get so drunk that they have to scream in order to not throw up. <laughs> yes, it's a very. De- it's it's not the kind of place you want to say grandma and grandpa. I think it's, no, it's not for your people at all. It's where unless people wants a dollar Jello shot <laughs> or to have like a rude wait staff. Yeah, throw a cheap sugar drink at him. Yeah, and, and uh, there were a lot of kids there, and they had the band Fill Dirt and the Dozers, which is this <laughs> <Yep>. old, <laughs> old Columbus, this old Ohio band. And these guys, I mean, they were rocked great. out. They were grandpas playing Eagles songs and like yeah. Duan songs, and it was just fucking exactly a fun time. Were, yeah, you were like, and and this was the beautiful thing about it being on Park Street. Is that as you walked up, it, Matt and I walked up and down Park Street a few times, and as you would walk down, you would see regular people like that usually come there all done up in their clothes and all their makeup and shit like that, and they would see all the people lining up to get into the tavern, and they'd be like, "What in the fuck is going on downtown this weekend?" Ew, Grody, who let all these raunchy people in here? <laughs> I mean, I'm sure that they were the, the, the young folks are probably viscerally horrified by all the wrinkles <laughs> and flab on display. And yeah, the, the yeah. unstretched bodies and all the stiff joints. And, like, even the people that are, like, fit and stuff were, like, geeks. Like, you would be like, oh, come on. <laughs> you fucking clapped for Jeb Bush earlier, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yeah, that's... Uh... <laughs> That was Sorry, what was that was what was beautiful. That's like when the that's like when you live in a place where they have conventions, where they where they actively court these kind of conventions. It's good to see the yeah, ones I... your city rejects, like where just people are just like you fucking ew, gross, you sick motherfuckers. I mean, I'm really, I really kind of like this idea though, because it does sound like they found their own niche. It's like, hey, we're we're old businessy people that want more money, you know, and we're just, you know, this is our this is our crew, and they get the fill dirt and the dozers to go out there. They, they there's some very nice pictures coming of that as well. Um, I, you got backstage, you got pretty, you got up in the mix, and uh, man, this is just, I don't. Man, we can't let these people have any power. Like, I feel, do you guys feel like we have to actively fight against them now because it's scary with their idea I, well, of uh, the amount of money they have? Uh, and I, I do have to say, like, you know, I, I think that their arguments about being grassroots is baloney. It's, you know, it's it's all it's astroturf, and it's like it's the it's the platonic idea of astroturf. But there is something seductive about that idea of like what because trying to trying to deal with the issues of of you know. Uh, of wealth disparity and racial segregation and, and and the legacy of that and and how we kind of like it's it, it's deep if, when you really try to to look at the edifice of this sort of late capitalist monster we've created it's deeply dispiriting on an individual level how do you fight this monolith and the story they tell which is you know forget all that garbage look within yourself find strength find character uh, you know find determination and you will through application of these principles, uh, be able to transcend all that. It's it's really I think it could be really seductive. Yeah, the monolith saves all. Yeah, become don't fight, don't be against don't it. Don't fight Go it. Yeah. With it. Absorb yourself into and, it. Yeah. And 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 that is really I mean that is basically what we we end up with is that America can do no wrong and business always makes the right decision and 
Yeah, that yeah. this is great, man. I really I hope we can do more do more things like this. I want to I really would love to uh, inject myself into some situations like this cuz well, I know hope- everybody else that listened along was just on the edge of their seat. The one thing that I'm really looking forward to next year, and and Brian and I have talked about this, but Brad, I, I'd like you to be involved. Is I, I'm I've got tentative plans. We are going to Cleveland for the RNC. Yeah, for sure. The Republican National Convention is in Cleveland this year. Yeah. So that is big time. Nick, you make it happen. You oh, yes, this is big time. I'm in. Yeah. I'm in for this. Yeah, we go up there and fucking dick around with a bunch of, you can see the weird people. I mean, that'll be nice, too, because there will be values voters there, and that's really who we want to be around. Yes. I want to get involved with that. I want to snuggle up with them and have a Velveeta grilled cheese. <laughs> it's weird, man, because you do want to kind of argue with them. Like, it, I don't know. They're so delusional. Like, there is a guy, Brett that had a shirt on that said FDR on it, and it said, not the one you think. <laughs> and then right underneath it, it said, Frederick Douglass, Republican. <laughs> nice. Yeah, they love that. Taking it back. Taking it back. You, there ain't, there's more than one FDR in these parts. Remember that guy who was a part of the Republican Party that literally bears absolutely no resemblance to the present one? <laughs> yeah, well, he had that a name. Guy. It was FDR. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, and we, we added the R, though. But we added the R, but you get it. Because fuck FDR. that guy. Fuck that commie. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I want to say, I want to make sure we get it in. Thank you to everybody that donated. Um, follow him on Twitter and, and tell them that how great of people they are. Mr. Uh, at, well, not Mr. Mr. Uh, who, who do we have here? Mr. Anonymous, number one. Anonymous, whoever came through with that, I really yeah, like yeah, that. That's some, that that's, some Jesus, that's some Jesus principles right there. The left hand don't know what the right hand does right there. Like, he's not bragging about anything. So I, or, or she, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to assume. Yeah, who knows? And uh, who else did we have? We got uh, John, John Collins, my boy, uh, from the Bay Area. Uh, and, of course, Will Menneker, who listeners should be very well familiar with at this point. Yes, who um, is infiltrated Street Fight Radio recently and uh, thinks he's going to make something of it. Oh, so, and, Most likely not. Most likely. I, I mean, he's a pretty smart guy. <laughs> I'm kind of intimidated. Also, my friend, uh, uh, my friend Rob Bauman, he put some money in there. He's, uh, uh, he's uh, R. Bauman online. He's good. He's a good follow. How do you like spell it? Is it with a G-H, or is there two N's? Yeah, there's, uh, let me bring it up here. There's, there's oh, several I didn't mean N's. to stumble. <laughs> it's fine. But uh, thank you. We'll get that in a second. Thank you all for donating. Uh, we'll keep continue doing things like this. Um, I had a lot of good times. Uh, I know that we all were like, kind of rushing to talk and stuff, but I, got, I laughed so goddamn hard, Matt. Um, your Blood Meridian... For all of you Cork McCarthy <laughs> fans out there, like this is why we do this shit, man. This is our community. <laughs> but that made me laugh so hard, and I was and I was just losing my shit. So I, I really had a good time, and we hope to continue doing things like this. Streetfightradio.com is of, cl- of course the place to to find that when we do them. Uh, iTunes, if you got a iPhone or iPad, and then if you got a Windows or uh, Android device, get the Stitcher yeah. Radio app. It's the easiest one. In an iPhone or whatever, if you have one of those other devices, it's just easier. It plugs into everything. Yes. That, but I, yeah, that's the way to get the show. Um, and what's, do you have that spelling, Matt? Yeah, one second. Sorry. <laughs> you still... You, I mean, you have to... We smoked a lot of weed on, on Friday. <laughs> I did. It was something. I just... It was... It, it really did feel like people were talking about Hunter Thompson, and uh, and that did feel like a, a really good comparison because we were everything felt very very uh, alien. Yeah, and if you had a exactly, and if you had a Brian Quinby firecracker, dude, I know the feelings. Um, they can they they kind of shift the world around you a little bit more than just like taking a blunt to the head can. Uh, so I can imagine it would be just so eerie to I mean to be around. You know, I just, yeah, the pure anger, man. Yeah, I, I always worry that on Street Fight we're building, like, straw men. And then 
I'm always you wouldn't go and you paid money to go meet him. I uh, yeah, I wanted to. I wanted to pay a li- I wanted to walk in there and really see. Are, are they straw men? Nope, nope. Everything we say, they. I mean, like any kind of racist thing, man. Anything that you think is just pure human decency, like ha, oh, we should take care of the earth. That would piss them off. You know oh, what they I mean? Hated it. That, that was probably the thing that got the most visceral response was stuff about the environment. Yeah, they, they fucking just hated it. They would get hot, like spit fucking white hot heat, hate at those at environmentalists. So you know they're going to tell us Iran's got a nuclear weapon. They're going to tell us to recycle. What kind of shit is that? <laughs> we don't got time for it. But yeah, man, did you get that All spelling? Right. You spell it. You got that spelled up. Guess not. Sorry, man. We'll get you. We'll get you proper credit on the next episode of Street Fight. All right, guys. Uh, and if you want to check the show notes, I don't know how you're listening. Uh, we'll put everybody else that helped out and all that. Um, but yeah, let's keep this going until one day we can have our own Street Fight convention where we can say all kinds of crazy shit that only makes sense to us, and we can have a or the band that we want to see at the end. So we'll get Rocky prom- Cathedral. And I promise some some uh, fucking. I, I definitely pre- yeah we'll get Rocket Cathedral and we'll get I, Mike H- we'll get Mike Hugs band yeah we'll, we'll get Mike Adelic. yeah there we go that's our fucking axe right there that's, that's our, our that's our bash afterwards no and then year. no cash bar that cash bar shit what's that about yeah all right so, we'll see you tomorrow guys all right peace oh you know. man yeah I'm done I'm done you guys good yeah did Matt drop off. You there, Matt? Yeah, I'm here. I hit my I hit the goddamn button. I'm sorry. Oh, it's cool. oh, I was like, man, did he get scared and run off because he no, couldn't find that name? No, no, I, I, I have this thing.